What does that even mean, Bowers Game Carnar? Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game preview, another special Kickstarter preview. Today, I'm very excited to check it out. The Guardians Explore. This is for two to five players. Ages uh, 12 plus will take about 45 to 90 minutes to play. And in The Guardians Explore, well, you're going to be going around your hometown playing as a kid, trying to fight off monsters and zombies and orcs and warlocks and all kinds of bad stuff, gaining victory points along the way. This is an asymmetrical deck refinement game with absolutely gorgeous artwork. How does it play? Let's open it up and I'll try to give you a feel for it. Alrighty then, we're going to be checking out the Guardians Explore. Now before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy in front of me, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. Also, uh, there's a lot of components in this game, I'm going to be going over everything and hopefully giving you a feel for how the gameplay works, uh, but don't be, don't be... Uh, don't be daunted by everything you see here. It actually is a rather simple game, uh, but let's get down to it. So in the Guardians Explorer, you're going to be playing as some kids, and your neighborhood's been overrun by zombies and warlocks and orcs and other bad stuff, and you're going to be fighting them off and trying to gain victory points, really. That's that's the main thing here. Uh, so first and foremost, we got a handy-dandy rule booklet. Yours is going to be full-color and double-sided. This one, obviously, is black and white, but it's 16 pages, double-sided, full-color, Pictures, illustrations, examples, all the good stuff you like to see in a well done rule booklet. So uh, I can definitely give this a thumbs up. So we're going to go over all the different components, everything you see out here, and then we'll go into the gameplay itself. So first and foremost, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these character cards right here, and you're actually not going to start on this side. You're going to start on this side right here. Now you're looking at it like, oh my gosh, there's so much on here. This is actually really helpful and beneficial. This shows you exactly what you're going to be doing during the setup phase. Because this is called, this is, uh, when I first started to play this game, I thought, oh, this is a, a drafting game mixed with a deck building game, but it's not. It's called a deck refinement game where you're going to start off with this deck and then you're trying to refine it and make it better as you go. Uh, but this is going to be going over exactly what you're going to do in what is called the setup phase. Uh, we're going to be setting everything out and drafting your cards. And that's one interesting thing about this game is that each player is going to first start the game with two super power cards. Now these are going to be these, uh, let's see, I think I got two in this deck right here. They're going to be these gold cards right here. Uh, they will give you unique superpowers. So you're going to start off with two of these cards, and each one is going to have two of those when they first start off the game. And then you're going to go into a drafting mode, where you're going to be drafting these cards right here, which will be different things that will give you uh, different special abilities if you're one-time uses, or uh, not one-time uses, excuse me, persistent effects that will last throughout the game, or things that will uh, you'll put out and there will be equipment, like a backpack, which will allow you to, during the cleanup phase, draw a card and discard a card, which can be very beneficial. Um, some of them will be attacks, and some will give you uh, the blue crystals, which are going to be money that you're going to spend to spend and use cards, and one, the red ones, which will be attack, because uh, those are going to be the primary currencies of the game. So this is not a very good card for attacking, however, this card is going to allow you to play a lot of stuff from your hand. And when you first start off the game, you're going to get your super card, and then you're going to get seven of these cards right here, and then you're going to draft them, a la Seven Wonders, Sushi Go, anything like that. You're going to be drafting down those cards. But the kicker of this is, you have those two super cards in front of you, and you're only going to be able to keep one. So you're trying to decide, all right, which of these cards is most going to benefit either both these cards, if, if you haven't decided on which cards you're going to keep, or the one that you have decided to keep. And you're going to do that, and eventually you're going to, uh, you're going to do it again, and then you're going to discard four of the cards, and then you're going to have your deck. Also, in a typical deck builder or deck refinement strategy, you're going to have your two beginning cards, which are Practice Swing and... Where is the other one? Practice Swing and Explore. These are not particularly great cards. Uh, this one's going to give you plus two blue, which will allow you to play some of your other cards, like your Backpack or your Elder Oak or your Fireball or any of the many other cards you're going to get. And then you have your Practice Swing, which is going to give you one Explore, uh, one, one blue crystal and one red, so that will be where you're going to, keep, to have your attack. So once you've done your setup phase, you've got your cards, you're going to flip this card over. And one more thing I do want to mention is that they include uh, suggesting cards. Uh, so if you were keeping this superpower, these are some good cards to sync up with it, which I thought was very nice and very useful. Very good use of the play raid card. Uh, so on this pile, you're going to have where, where how you're going to play the game. So each person's going to have the location phase, the power phase, all the different phases of the game. Everyone's going to start with two secret quest cards, and uh, I'll show you some of those right now. I'll just grab two of them real quick. So this one, for instance, at the end of the game, 
If at the end of the game, if you have more familiar cards than anyone else, you'll gain four points. This one, if you, you're trying to slay the most zombies, so if you slay the most zombies and you have the most zombies, you'll be gaining five points. So each player is going to have their own unique superpower, they're going to have their own unique secret quest, and they're going to draft their own unique cards. So each game uh, is going to be very, very different, and there are going to be definitely asymmetrical powers. So let's get back over here. Uh, so over here, you're going to have your track where you're going to keep track of how much attack you have on a given turn. Uh, this is your trophy pile where you're going to slay monsters and zombies and all sorts of things and put them there. And those will uh, give you different points and some will give you various different special abilities and whatnot. And uh, so this is going to be your little player aid card. It's very, very useful. So those are the player aid cards. Wow, that was lengthier. So out in front of you, you are going to have your city of, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but there are going to be 10 different locations. So you have your home, your candy shop, your zoo, your hill, uh, various different places. But the important thing to note is that each place is going to give you a different ability that you can use use when you go there. However, in order to move your guy there and use there, you're first going to have to clear out the monsters on there. When you start off the game, you're going to have pretty weak monsters, like your zombie sisters. She's only going to, to take four hit to kill her. She's also only going to give you one victory point. However, as you progress through the second wave, all the way up to the third wave, things are going to get more difficult. So you might have like this orc captain up here, or the spider army, or the warlock scholar. So you, they're going to get a lot more powerful, but luckily you're going to be refining your deck, so you also are going to be more powerful as you progress through the game. Uh, so we've got our different locations, uh, there's ten of them, they all start with monsters on them. You're going to have your trailblazer token, this is going to signify who is the first player. Each player is also going to have uh, their corresponding pawn, which will match their player card. And also they're going to have a blanket fort, which will match their corresponding player card. This Because uh, this is going to allow you to secure an area, so that way more monsters will not spawn on top of there. You're going to have start with your cards. You're also going to have this little guardian adventure sheet over here. This is uh, pretty useful. This is mostly going to help you keep track of the different amount of rounds. And also, these are damage tokens that will come into play through different points of the game. Uh, now, there's two different modes. You can play the apprentice mode, which is going to be easier and quicker, and I do recommend trying, uh, trying that the first time you play. And then the guardian mode, and this just means you're going to have more battles, and you're going to have an additional uh, big boss battle. Uh, because uh, there are also boss cards. So let's get to these boss cards right here. These are going to be big bad guys that you're going to be facing. You're going to be facing them together. Because while this game does have a slightly cooperative aspect, it's uh, it's kind of similar to like Marvel Legendary, uh, the way you're supposed to play it, where you're you're all going to be trying to do the same thing, trying to kill all the the bad guys. But at the same time, whereas the most guardian points or victory points at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game. Uh, but there's second and third wave monsters, and as you guessed, uh, the... Uh, these are the second wave monsters, and these are the third wave monsters. So as you progress on through the game and refine your deck, uh, they are going to get more powerful and be harder to kill. Uh, they're also going to give you different bonuses, different perks. And that's one thing that, to notice about all these different waves of cards. There's going to be some different text on them. Some of them will have absolutely nothing on them, uh, like this one right, right there. So like this zombie sister, nothing's going to happen. But some will have things that will happen as soon as they come into play. Uh, some will have persistent effects. Some will uh, sync together, like the warlocks will kind of work together. Some will do some bad things, like the spiders will hurt you. Lots of different stuff going on in the character cards. So everyone's going to get their own secret quests. They're going to get their own cards. They're going to draft. They're going to have. Uh, they're going to choose one of the two superpowers that they they, they they were originally dealt, and then they're going to start the game. They're going to draw four cards, and they're going to place their character on a location based on the turn order. Now, as we first start the game, you're only going to be able to go to the home, and the home has a really nice special ability, especially for the first time in the game. You're going to draw two cards, so you're going to go from four cards to six cards, and when you draw up, generally you're only going to draw four cards. Uh, and then you're going to discard two of your cards, and then you may trash one or two cards in your discard pile. So essentially, you might have these weak cards you want to get rid of, boom, or ones that might not even sync up with your deck. And that's one thing that I thought was very interesting about this game, is that as you progress later through the game, you really will want to get some of the stuff that does not sync up with your deck out of your hand. Uh which I thought was interesting. We'll take a look at some more of them. The candy shop is going to give you uh, three of the, the blue tokens, so you'll be able to spend a little bit more. The hill is going to give you five attacks. That one's very, very useful. The school, draw three cards, discard three cards. You're going to be dealing with uh, pretty much whatever you want. Now, on these, let's go over a different couple different spots. Uh, the graphic design on here. So this is where the monster is going to go. Now, if you defeat the monster and you set up your fort, that is where your blanket fort is going to go, which is going to prevent it from uh, getting more monsters on it, which would be very good, well, considering you're there at the time. Uh, also, 
I do want to mention that. Uh, well, let's, all, let's get let's just get into the gameplay. So first, you're going to do is you're going to place your guardian on a different location. So obviously, the first round we would have to start at the home. Uh, now your persistence effects are going to apply. This is the power up phase. Uh, monsters negative effects would apply, which is where you're going to have to look at the different monsters on the board and see if they do anything. I don't think we have anything to start with. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we do not have anything else. It's going to be hurting us right now. And then we're going to get to the surprise phase because there's going to be some cards that will have different t icons on them. Let's see if I can find one real quick. Uh, of course, I can't find one. There's going to be ones that are played specifically during the surprise phase. And these are going to be surprises to your opponents because they might not be able to see it coming. So uh, that could really help you out. Then you're going to get to the battle phase, which is actually a very deterministic battle phase. You will keep track of of your battle, how much you have battle on this little thing right here, they say you might have 13 battle, and then you will go to a location and you will kill things and you will gain those trophies and essentially you will gain those victory points and you will also open up that area for other people to go. Uh, once everyone has done that, you're going to do the cleanup phase, so you're going to pass, pass the first player token um, and then you are going to move the chart forward one thing because you're going to be going through different battles. Uh, eventually you'll face the boss battle and you'll fight that together. But you're going to continue to do that over and over and over again. You're going to be refining your deck, trying to get better cards in there. and Well, trying to get the poorer cards out of there, I should say. And that's pretty much it. You're going to do that over and over again. Four times in the... Uh, uh, the what is it, the apprentice game and eight times in the end game whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game if there is a tie whoever has the most quest cards at the end of the game uh not quest cards uh, monster cards i do believe at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game and that in a nutshell is how the guardians explore is played all right then the guardians explorer coming to a kickstarter you very very soon who might be digging this game first and foremost if you like asymmetrical games where each and every person is going to have different powers look no further this one is definitely going to fit that bill uh, you're going to have your own unique superpowers you're going to have your own unique secret quest you're going to be drafting different cards so if you like a game that not only feels different each time you play it a little bit, but also is going to have asymmetrical powers, this one might fit that bill. I also like the drafting phase quite a bit. So if you're a fan of drafting, I think you're really going to get a kick out of that drafting mechanism because you have these two superpowers in front of you. You have to choose between two of them, and you're drafting not knowing necessarily which of the superpowers you're going to pick, and that really makes the drafting process really interesting, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, another thing that people are like are, is... The artwork. The artwork is absolutely fantastic. It is gorgeous. It is. It scratches my back personally. I know it's a very subjective matter, but this artwork is very, very well done. As well, I think a lot of people are going to like the graphic design on this. Uh, that's another thing that I wanted to mention is that the graphic design really helps this game along and I think pushes it into the stratosphere of being, while not a new family game, or a new gateway game, but a gateway plus or a family plus. What I mean by that is, this is not a game that I would recommend necessarily to newer gamers. Like, if you've only played one game before, I don't know if this is what I'm going to push you towards. However, if you're only like a second, third, fourth, fifth game, and you're just sort of getting your feet wet into the hobby, this is not going to be too complex. Also, with family gamers, not the first family game I would pick, but once you get to that third, fourth, fifth game, this might be like, all right, you can probably handle this. Uh, the last thing, uh, last thing is going to some people are going to dig is that it is a deck refinement game. I know there are not too many deck refinement games out there. There's a lot of deck builders, a lot of drafting. Uh, I can't really think of too many other deck refinement games. But that is the Guardians Explorer coming to a Kickstarter near you very, very soon. It looks like it might be your cup of tea. Be sure to click on the Kickstarter link down below. Also in the comments below, let me know what is your favorite city. For me personally, it is Denver, Colorado. I've spent a couple months there. really enjoy it. You know, I, I love the snow. I love I love the skiing, the snowboarding. I love the food. I love the people. I love the Denver Broncos. Uh, I love the fact that they're downtown Denver is just so centralized and focused, and I just love Denver. Well, let me know in the council, what is your favorite city? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.